Now, Miriam, you're a patron for the Laura Lynn Foundation. Tell us about tonight. I think it's a really important uh, event. I've been patron of Laura Lynn since the beginning, was there before the first brick was laid. I always feel very lucky. I have eight healthy children. So Laura Lynn is very close to my heart, and I'm just really delighted to be here every year. And you're going to be emceeing tonight now. What are the guests in for? They're getting in for lots of nice prizes, lots of nice surprises, lots of auction prizes, lots of good guests, and most importantly, a wonderful couple who have experienced how important Laura Lynn was to them when their little child was sick. And I think that's always the heart of the night. So you remember why you're here and why it's important. Absolutely. And now there's a lot of really hard to hear stories going on in Ireland at the moment. And I know it's kind of a worrying time to be a woman in Ireland, but you've spoken to Vicky Phelan yourself. How was that for you? It was a privilege. I went down to Limerick last week and interviewed her. And now, obviously, a lot of other people have been very brave in coming out. But there's something very courageous about the first person who comes out doesn't sign a confidentiality agreement and that was Vicky. She was just a joy to be with and I always felt I was in the presence of greatness and everyone else I was working with did too and she's great fun. <laughs> you know? Brilliant and then as well now I know you can't obviously comment on the Eighth Amendment at all given your line of work but I saw you retweeted Anne Lovett's boyfriend's article I was just wondering that was such an important piece of history. How did you find reading that story? I thought it was fascinating um, kudos to Rosita Boland in the Irish Times for getting that story, um, for publishing it, for speaking to the man. It was just riveting to actually hear. I'd all down the years heard about Anne Lovett, but then that her boyfriend spoke all these years on. It was just so interesting. It was like a social history of Ireland and a great journalistic coup as well. Real, and we know you've got your own bits of Irish history coming up. How are the documentaries on Northern Ireland going? Uh, very good. We going to America next month to Atlanta, back to Selma actually, and we're going to be interviewing the daughter of Martin Luther King, just about civil rights and how that impacted on Northern Ireland. So I'm really looking forward to it, and they're going very well. Brilliant, and any other bits in the pipeline for us to look forward to? Uh, in the morning I'm interviewing Rhina Shocknessy, the Eurovision singer, win or lose, so it won't matter, I won't date this. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. He's a lovely guy. Fingers crossed. He's one of the favourites. And yeah, prime time next Tuesday and Thursday. So my life rolls on. <laughs>